you're using loads of productivity apps to manage your to-do list, to write down notes, and also to manage a few projects on the side, then Notion is an app that can really help you combine all of those together and remove all of the clutter and become a productivity guru. It's especially great for students, but equally as good if you're a working professional just looking to add some order to your life. Since using Notion, I've managed to completely transform and revolutionize all of the projects that I'm working on and the kind of side ideas. It helps me manage a property company with a side blog, create YouTube videos on a weekly basis, manage all of my freelance graphic design work, as well as keeping a great list of books to read, managing my holidays and loads more things. If you're new here, my name is Matt. I invest in property on the side and I also distill insights on productivity, tech and personal finance to lead a healthier, happier, more productive life. If you haven't done so already, please consider subscribing to the channel for loads more videos and don't forget to hit the like button if you found value in this video. These are all my own views and if somebody's doing something for free in 2020, then it must be good. I'm going to break down my experience of Notion into three areas, exploring why I think it's so great, how it changed my productivity life, and how it could help other people just like you. These days we have a million things running through our heads, we lead really, really busy lives, and if you have loads of things going on, maybe you're working on a few side projects during lockdown, maybe you're a student and you're having to go through all of your brand new modules in the new semester, then it's pretty common that you're using a million and one apps to manage your to-do list, to manage all your note taking, and everything else going on, and none of it's really really tied together and none of it kind of talks to each other or communicates, which can mean you often forget things or you don't feel as productive because you're having to manage all of these different apps. And maybe if you have an iPhone or a MacBook and the two don't really kind of sync up together, it's no surprise that the average person has around 60 to 90 apps on their phone. And for more tech savvy users, that can be well over 100 apps on their phones, which simply means a lot of different apps to do a lot of very different things. Before I discovered Notion, I didn't really have an efficient way to kind of manage manage all the projects going on and also at the same time while spinning all of those plates keep the quality at the same time, it was really, really hard. It also meant that I didn't really have a way to structure my thoughts and content, which meant that blog posts and certain videos and classes that I create were kind of all over the place with not really much structure going on. And helping organize that better means that I can tick the right boxes and stick to the point. And lastly, one of the reasons why I really love Notion is because it syncs seamlessly into the cloud. So if you have an iPhone, a MacBook, an iPad, or any other type of device, then Notion stores all of those notes away so you don't have to worry about closing things down or you can simply start doing some work on one device and then hop over to another device and carry on the exact same work. It's absolutely seamless and that's why I love it. So I thought it was a nice way to break this down that we'd look at the what, the why and the how in a little bit more detail to explore what Notion is, what it does and why it's so great. So the first reason why I think Notion is so great is because of its flexibility and versatility. You can do absolutely anything with the app and it depends on your needs and what you require. But if you want to build a database, you can build a database. If you need a simple Kanban board to move cards around and manage tasks, then you can do that. Maybe it's just note taking or creating a to-do list. There are loads of different things you can do and it's a really powerful, mature tool. If you're a student and you just need to simply take some notes, then you can do that. Or if you're a little bit of a nerd like me, you can create a database that's relational with loads of roll-ups going through it and you can really, really go to town on it. I'd probably say a lot of my bread and butter on Notion is making use of Kanban boards. So if you're not familiar with what Kanban is, it's essentially a tool that's used within Agile. And what you can do is you have three different columns, which is to do, doing, and done. And rather than just having a list where you tick things off, instead you can create cards and then put them into each column and then you can click on the individual card for more information and more details. And it's a great way to kind of add a workflow to a you know particular process, whether that's a project that you're working on or something bigger that needs a lot of kind of different aspects to it. I also use a lot of databases as well. So I track things like the books that I want to read and the books that I've read. And then when I mark one as read, it moves down to the next database. And the great thing is they're really simple to set up and use and you do not need to be a huge kind of database nerd or an expert. It's not like being in the 90s and working on Microsoft Access. And it's a great way to manage various things within your life. Okay, so now we've covered why I think Notion is so great. Now we're gonna cover a little bit of the how. So how can you get started on Notion? What are the things that you can do? And I'm gonna give you some ideas and tips and tricks. 
The great thing is with Notion, there are tons of existing videos out there by some fantastic YouTubers and from the official Notion channel themselves as well, showing you how to set up templates and kind of give you a little bit of food for thought on kind of how you can use Notion. If you head to the bottom left when you're using Notion, you'll see a little tab called templates and there are tons and tons of things on here from managing your personal life to note taking as a student to managing projects if you're working within a uh, a company. I recommend just starting off really easy, download Notion and then just use it as a bit of a note taking app and get used to kind of adding structure and headings and titles and writing away and then as you start to use Notion more and more and integrate it into your life you will definitely find ways to kind of bring a Notion system and create a particular system whether that's reading books or you could create a recipe list for example of things you want to try and create and you can kind of move it across a Kanban board and slowly Notion will just take over your life. I highly recommend their official YouTube channel as well they have live streams on there where they have guests who show them their workflow productivity systems there's also Ali Abdul who's a fantastic YouTuber and is an absolute Notion advocate. That's why we should be improving our typing speed. I've actively worked to improve mine and it's had a big knock-on effect on my life and hopefully one day it will um, help me attract a mate. You can also check out other YouTubers like Thomas Frank who have loads of fantastic content on Notion as well. I'll leave a link in the description for both of their channels so you can go and check out some of their videos on Notion. Now I'm going to take you through a really simple and easy to follow setup tour on this video and what we're going to do is set up a mini database that tracks the books that you want to read and the books that you've read and I'll show you how you can do that so let's jump in. Okay so we're on a blank Notion page at the moment and what I'm going to do is just call this my reading list and then what you want to do is when you click here all you have to do is type forward slash and then it comes up with a list of all the blocks and all the commands that you can add so you can just have a scroll through if you know exactly what you're adding you can just type it in and then it will add it so I want to actually for the very start just add in a simple table so the table is going to be inline and this is what the table looks like. I'm going to make this full width. Let me just change that. I'm going to call this the book list. And then what you can do is you can chop and change all of the different fields on Notion. So let's change this one to the name of the book. And uh, let's change this one. You can also change the property type as well. So you can have text, number, select, multi-select, drop downs, check boxes, etc. For this one, I'm going to keep it as text and then label this author if that loads author and then let's have a think of what else we can do so then we could look at genre for example so for this one I am going to go for the select option change the title to genre and then we'll come back to that in a second and I'll show you how to add some of the tags into each particular field let's do this as status if this loads status so if I then change this to select and again I'll come back to this in a second and show you how you can add ta tags to the status itself. So let's add a book to start. Now I'm reading a book at the moment which is the four hour work week and the author is Tim Ferriss. Okay and the genre of this book is a mixture of non-fiction versus self-help improvement so I'm just going to go for self-help. Now at the moment there are no kind of existing um, kind of categories within the genre so I'm going to type this one so self help and you can see there that it, that it says create self help so I can either hit the enter key or click on my mouse and then that adds that simply as a tag if I then wanted to change this and let's have another one which is improvement I could then create that one and it changes it around so this particular um, field which is a select field only allows you to choose one at any single time so if I then went back to self-help it would kind of override that and then change it. The great thing is as well you can change all of the colors of these so if I wanted it to be orange for example then I could do that and then the status let's have let's create a few so um, so need to buy bought reading where's that typing reading and completed and actually that's just give me an idea because now I've got completed on there I'm going to change this to green I actually don't really need a checkbox because I can create filters based off the status so let's remove the tick box field because we now don't need it okay and then let's quickly just create a few more random books so you can get a feel for what a list looks like when it's a bit more completed <laughs> 
Okay, so we put a few books into the reading list and now you can see there's a really simple table. We've got the name of the books, the author, the genre, and then the status, which is, as it stands, a really good way to track what you're reading, but we can get a little bit more nerdy with this and create filters and kind of different conditions where, depending on the status you set, can move it down to a different list. And this is where we start to look at linked databases. So all you have to do is if you type forward slash and then type in the word linked, you'll see an option comes up, which says create linked database. So I'm going to hit enter on that one and it's going to ask me to select a database. So let me just find my book list that I've just created, which is here. Now, as you can see, this is loading the exact same table that I've got above. So this table sits on this page and that is a linked database to that table. Now, here's the really cool stuff. So I could then, for example, let's move this down. So let's create a heading here. So I'm going to create a H1 heading and put it under the completed section. And then I'm just gonna move this in between these two here. So now you've got completed. Now what I'm gonna do is if you go to the settings menu here and you can go on filter, and then on the filter, here's where we can get really creative, and really clever. And this is where Notion has endless options to create whatever works best for you. So I'm gonna add a filter. Now on this particular filter, what it's asking me is a bit of conditional logic. So where the status is, and then you can essentially select the option. Okay, so we're gonna add three filters on here. So you've got where the status is need to buy, where it is bought, or, and I'm gonna change this, or. So this is where you've got a lot of customizability. So you can add and or or filters here, depending on the logic that you want to create. And also reading. So then this means here that if the status here is bought, need to buy or reading, it will display in that particular reading list. Now, if I then go onto this one and add a filter, if I go on filter here, click add filter again, add the filter. So then where the status is complete, I only want to show the complete books that I've read here. So here we go. And I select completed. And now it shows all of those completed books. And now this is where the magic happens on Notion. So let's say Atomic Habits by James Clear. And I've just finished reading the book. All I have to do is click on here, change the status to completed and it disappears out of the top table and goes into the linked database. And now I've got a really easy kind of simple to manage system of having books. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing to the channel for more fantastic videos and hit the like button if you found this video useful and got some value out of it. If you enjoyed watching this video, then feel free to check out my channel where you can find lots of other videos on self-improvement, productivity, and personal finance that should hopefully give you some great inspiration. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in my next video.